Welcome to the Random Encounter Show. I'm Jeff Stalker 5, coming in for an episode of Table Talk. You know what that means? Have something to drink, come sit here at the table with me, and let's have just an open, script-free, teleprompter-free discussion over our tabletop gaming hobbies. Yeah? <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Where have I been? Well, I just got done unplugging a toilet, you know, a clogged toilet, uh, if that's any indication of how this, how this episode's gonna go, <laughs> probably. Uh, yeah, I have been working really hard in the background, a lot of painting, uh, getting some commission work together, I got some more on the way, and I'm in the early planning phases, budgeting, etc. for a big project we're gonna do here, hopefully uh, by the end of this year, a whole lot of work goes into it, but it's something that's never been done on YouTube before, and I'm really excited uh, to when we can showcase this. So, it's uh, it's a massive project. Yeah, there's a lot of work that's going to be involved with that, but we got plenty of stuff to talk about until then. Uh, what are we going to talk about this episode? First things first, we got our Monsters Monsters 2.7 edition uh, Kickstarter box in. We're going to be taking a look at that. Uh, in fact, once we look at that, we're going to get into a discussion about Monsters Monsters and Tunnels and Trolls in general. And I'm going to try to answer a lot of the common questions that I still see, not only in th those communities around those games, but also in our own community, what people come to me and ask about. Uh, so yeah, even though we've covered Tunnels and Trolls and Monsters Monsters a heck of a lot, I guess we are the channel on YouTube to go to for uh, both games. Yeah? Hey, proud of that. Proud of that. Uh, before we go any further, sad news in the hobby. Uh, a couple of days ago, the community was made aware that James Ward had passed away. Uh, founding father of our hobby, you know, he was part of the, he was a player in the original Greyhawk campaign. He worked for TSR, he worked right alongside Gary Gygax. He was instrumental in a lot of the advanced Dungeons and Dragons first edition material. He went on to create several games like Metamorphosis Alpha uh, and so forth. Very instrumental in the early hobby and instrumental throughout his lifetime in the hobby. Uh, I've got to speak to him on a few occasions online. Uh, he was just a magnificent guy. I never got to meet him in real life, but uh, you could just see everything that he did within the hobby that he had a just distinct and strong love for the hobby and he went on throughout his career to work for many places including troll lord games and such so yeah yeah just the instrumental founding father uh, of our hobby passed on to the farther realms so uh i would ask the random encounter army to just join me in a moment of silence in memory and honor of Mr. James Ward. Yeah, and a lot of gratitude. Anybody that is part of the hobby and promotes healthy hobby gaming and a healthy hobby community and such, our hats have to be off to them. Our hats have to be off, especially in this day and age with the culture and such that surrounds our tabletop hobbies for whatever reason. Uh, what else is going on in the tabletop world? I don't have a clue. <laughs> Just to be honest, I'm not the place you come to for news in the tabletop world, really, because I don't pay, att pay attention to the news and the chaos and the drama and such things. This, you know, uh, if anything, the Random Encounters show, I try to make that an escape from all that. Uh, I will say that when we did the Imagine video for the Imagine role-playing system, we got a ton of new subscribers in. That video went wild. So I have to welcome all of our new subscribers around here. Yeah, I should have probably started off with that instead of plunging toilets. But yeah, you are now press-ganged into the Random Encounter Army. 
Uh, we're very hobby centric here. We promote a lot of healthy hobby gaming. Uh, anyways, anyways, let me get something to drink and quit babbling on. Let's take a look at the Monsters Monsters 2.7 edition. And I will warn you that we're going to take a look at that, look at this. Uh, then we're going to talk about tunnels and trolls and monsters, monsters in general. I have a few things I want to say, a few answers I want to, a few questions I want to answer. <laughs> and then we'll come back and talk about this. Yeah? Complete chaos. What, what do you expect around here? Anyways. Anyways. We got a monsters, monsters dice bag. Really nice dice bag. Reminds me of the Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls dice bag. A little bit smaller, but definitely has this like felt-like material on the inside. It has a stronger material. Uh, yeah, this is built to last. And we got a few of the Monster Monsters uh, dice set. Let's show you one of these guys real quick. Uh, this is a really handsome dice set. It's uh, It reminds me of Mardi Gras. It has sort of green and purple swirls with the sort of glimmering, shimmering effect and the gold pips. Uh, let's see. On the one side of the die, we have the Monsters Monsters logo. Yeah, it just reminds me of Mardi Gras, whatever, but a beautiful, beautiful set of dice. Uh, rounded quarters, nice weight, uh, just like the Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls uh, dice sets. Uh, these seem to be really high quality. And that's something that we've come to expect from those that are behind, you know, Steve Crompton, Ken St. Andre, Stephen Jones. The list is huge. But the people, especially Steve Crompton and Ken St. Andre, the main two, that are behind Monsters, Monsters, and were behind Tunnels and Trolls and such, we've just come to expect quality, and they, they never fail to satisfy. Up top, we have sort of the main star of the package, or the main star of the Kickstarter. We've got the Monsters Monsters 2.7 edition. Yeah? Now, this has a co coil binding. I know a lot of people out there, they, they, they try to avoid coil-bound books for whatever reason. Me, I'm actually a big fan of them. Why? Because I can open this book anywhere, lay it flat... And it stays open to the page that I want to leave it on. It's fantastic for the table. Yeah. So I always enjoy finding coil bound uh, books such as these. The one thing you have to be aware of is that with especially this, the metal coils. The, don't mistreat your book and bend these up or your book's going to just basically be ruined. But if you treat it right, you know, it makes a very nice and highly playable table copy of the game and of course this was numbered there was 250 this was number 53 and signed by Steve Crompton and Ken St. Andre pretty much everything in here is <laughs> and this is the main thing we're going to come back and talk about toward the end of the episode yeah why this is so important for the monsters monsters game itself up next we have a signed Sheet of the standees. This is set number three. Uh, I have all the sets for Monsters, Monsters, and we have the sets that were made for Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls and a few other editions of Tunnels and Trolls. Even Mercenary Spies and Private Eyes had something similar. Uh, when it comes to the standees, these have been around the hobby for a very long time. I will say that I believe Steve is the main man behind these standees. Uh, the best in the industry. Now, I myself, I don't use these. What they are is you cut them out, fold them up, and you can use them on table in lieu of miniatures. Uh, the veterans around here knows that I love miniatures. So I leave my sheets as they are. I, I will bring out the miniatures. But if you wanted to use these in lieu of miniatures, they make very, um, very handsome alternatives. Up next... We saw this on the holiday special. You know, one of the early prints of it. It is a map for the Game Master Adventures in the 2.7 rules. We've got the village of Skulkheim. 
And on the other side, we've got the dwarven ruins of Gaekel. Yeah? Very nice, attractive. Uh, again, Steve Crompton with the maps. He's a master map maker. And I don't know where they get these printed or made or whatever, but they are on some thick, nice, durable stock. Yeah, so always a treat to get in a map from them. Up next is something really interesting here. Uh, this was a addition to the Kickstarter. It is Monsters, Monsters, Here There Be Monsters, 1976, Zero Edition. Yeah? Now, if you watch the holiday special... We got an early print of this in the blue cover. Got some different artwork on it. Uh, but this one's coil bound. It's numbered and signed by Ken St. Andre, the troll godfather himself. Now, what is this zero edition? I've actually, I've actually really enjoyed reading, reading and, and thinking about this since the holiday special. Uh, Ken St. Andre found some of his personal notes from 1976 uh, from his development or his plans or the way he was thinking to create Monsters Monsters, which the first edition itself was released in 1976. Uh, but anyway, he found the early, early development notes on this. Here's an example. Yeah? And from those notes, he went back and created the game as he very first imagined it. Yeah, and he was going to call it Here There Be Monsters. <laughs> I love that title as well. And they also included some different maps. Some of them were uh, had maps that were play on uh, of the names of some of the Flying Buffalo Incorporated employees. There was also another map that was based on H.P. Lovecraft's dream world of kadath i think it was i don't know it was a, it was an interesting book that our story that hp lovecraft published that was instead of being like in the horror or mystery genre it was in more of a fantasy genre yeah it's been some years since i read that book but i still remember the cats launching themselves and the cats launching themselves and taking off through outer space <laughs> it was a it was a wild story by Mr. Lovecraft. Yeah, uh, but yeah, this is absolutely awesome. It's very classic fantasy. It's got some fantastic artwork in it that's very appropriate to the Monsters Monsters game itself. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy having this. And, you know, he they probably could have just released some of the few notes and said, here you go, here's sort of a handout or something so you can see the very first... Uh, work done on Monsters Monsters. Instead, Ken decided I'm going to write an entire rule system based off these early development notes, and this is the way it would have been. Yeah, and I, I think that's really neat. So, yeah, yeah, definitely a fantastic bonus to the Kickstarter. Up next, we had the Crystal Caves Challenge. Yeah. This is a new solo for Monsters Monsters uh, tied in with the Monsterary of Zimrala or the world of Zimrala. Of course, signed by Ken St. Andre and Steve Crompton. And I tell you what, the solos only keep getting better. Uh, I'll say it right here and now that, you know, I, I really love all the old solos for Tunnels and Trolls, you know. They were the first to do these choose your own adventure style modules for an RPG game. And I think their modules just stand out. You know, that they're the best it was ever done in the genre. Uh, but with Mission for a Cat Goddess, the first solo that was released along with the Monsterary of Zimrala in 2022. If I believe, I don't know, my memory's gone tonight. Uh, might be some of the... Uh, sealant fumes from all the miniatures were spraying down the finished up. I don't know. But no, a mission for a cat goddess. It was like Ken St. Andre's taking the gloves off here for Monsters Monsters. And the Crystal Caves has tie-ins also to Troll World with Gristlegrim. 
And uh, yeah, it reminds me a lot of Death Trap Equalizer. I don't know if that's going to pick up. We got a helicopter landing on the roof of the house. We can't get any peace around here. We live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, there, there's no one around. Yet every time I want to make a video, toilets plug up, uh, helicopters land on the house, uh, World War III has begun outside. Excuse me while I go get a few battle rifles. <laughs> no. Uh, anyways, this reminds me a lot of Death Trap Equalizer because uh, the sort of the theme of this is the troll godfather himself. They've got an image of Ken St. Andre as a troll on the back of this. <laughs> But him and Gristle Grimm have opened up a dungeon for profit, basically, on the continent of Zimrala. Yeah, absolutely love the theme. <laughs> so, yeah, we got this for the holiday special. I haven't played it yet. Uh, guys, I, just to be honest, I, I've got very little gaming done in the last several months. I sit down here and there. I did some RuneQuest 3rd uh, edition soloing and such. Uh, but yeah, between all the projects that we're working on and stuff, just don't have time for a ton of gaming. But this is definitely top of the list that when I get a good break for an hour or so, we're going to sit down, roll up a character, and run through the Crystal Caves and try to see if we can beat the challenge. Uh, we added on another solo here that for whatever reason, I completely missed it. Yeah, this one's signed by Ken and Steve as well. But it's Jungle Jeopardy, uh, another solo that takes place on the world of Zimrala for Monsters, Monsters. So definitely want to run through that as well. And last but not least, we have the Cthulhu Crisis Preview Edition. Yeah, last time Steve was on the show, uh, he talked about this was what he was working on. And I have to say, it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, what it is, is another first coming from this crew. Yeah, they've had several firsts in the industry. But they are creating full-blown comic books that are, uh, you know, that, that's what Steve, hey, he, 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 he does a lot of comics. He does a lot of work all over the industry. Uh, but he's doing full-blown comic books. And it's also going to include an RPG adventure based on the comics. Yeah, uh, I've seen some previews of the Kickstarter and such. I'm super excited. I never really got into comic books, even as a kid. There was a few I would check out, especially any that had to do with monsters. Yeah, I was a weird kid. Everybody loved sports heroes and video game characters and such. And while all that was cool and everything, me... I was a monster kid. I love monsters. Yeah, I want, I had, you g give me uh, stickers of monster heads and, and, and different things like that. Mad balls and stuff. Anything to do with monsters, especially the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> Frankenstein. I mean, it don't matter. Yeah, any kind of weirdo monster stuff, that was what I was into. You know, most people had uh, a poster of Michael Jordan or whatever on the wall. I had I had the movie poster for Creature from the Black Lagoon. Why not? Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely loved it. But there's tie-ins to this with City of the Gods, uh, along with some of Steve Crompton's and the crew he works with the comics. They're more famous characters, including Demi the Demoness, uh, Erica America, and Vampirooni. So yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more about this as well is that all look out flying cardboard uh, yeah i believe that's all we'll set this over here uh let's talk about let's pull our stuff out here yeah it's been a while since we've had this on camera right <laughs> we're here to rectify that we got a few things to get on camera here. Uh, now, when it comes to monsters, monsters, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. And I'll get to it in a second. But when Monsters, Monsters 2.0 or second edition was released in 2020, I really didn't see the point in it. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about it for a second. But it's uh, in a second. But I really didn't see the point in it. And I really wasn't interested in it 
at its release. Uh, so I want to talk about what, why that is and why that has changed big time. Uh, now, you guys know that I'm a big fan of Tunnels and Trolls, which is really surprising to me anyways, because I am not really a rules light, as most people would call it, gamer. Are really, I would say that RPG systems more abstract in nature instead of rules light. I'm not. But, you know, when it comes to rules like gaming, I see RPGs not as games in of themselves, but as tools in which to build a game on the table with. And we've done this, we talked about building a core library and using it like a toolbox. <clears throat> well, when it comes to the more abstract or rules-like side of gaming, I'm, first off, I'm not a huge fan of it. I like games like, like we talked about Imagine last week. Or not last week, last episode. Maybe that was two weeks ago. <laughs> you know, Role Master, Harp, uh, this kind of stuff. Those are more my kind of thing. But that doesn't mean that I don't have room in my library for some more abstract systems. Uh, and when it comes to those abstract systems, I'm the kind of person where I don't feel like I need to own a ton of different RPG systems. I find one I really like and that I really like to work with, and I pretty much stick to it. And for the rules light abstract side, Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, to me, is the definitive game. It, it just is. Uh, unlike most rules-like games out there, uh, Tunnels and Trolls remains rules-like in mechanics, but in overall scope is very comprehensive and complete. You don't see that a whole lot with uh, the more abstract style games. Uh, so yeah, Tunnels and Trolls, I grabbed a hold of it, or was it like 2016, right after the Kickstarter, and I absolutely uh, fell in love with the system and everything. I mean, uh, this system's been around. It's going to have its 50th anniversary next year. <laughs> so yeah, this game's been around. Uh, and yeah, I absolutely love it for what it is. Like I said, I see games like tool sets. Uh, you know, this RPG over here, this is more like a screwdriver. You know, now it doesn't do me any good if I've got nails to hammer, you know. But a hammer doesn't do me much good if I've got to turn some screws. So having the various tools to me, uh, that's very important. So yeah, when it comes to abstract gaming, I don't have a whole lot, but I do have a whole lot of tunnels and trolls. Uh, like I said, it is, even to this, right now, it is the definitive game. Uh, people ask me what my favorite edition of Tunnels and Trolls is. It is Deluxe. Yeah? I know a lot of people, 5 and 5.5, .5, and there's even a few people out for the 7.5 edition and such. Uh, Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, to me, I, I just, it's the complete package. Yeah? It's got enough rules to make a very comprehensive game. It's got enough stuff you can tack on there to maybe bring it out of the abstractness a little bit plus it has the full campaign setting of troll world and everything even the kitchen sinks in here yeah so yeah uh and i pretty much stick to tunnels and trolls uh but but was it in 2021 i believe it was in 2021 might have been late 2020 uh, the Tunnels and Trolls, Ken St. Andre sold the rights to Tunnels and Trolls to another company, and they also took over Flying Buffalo Incorporated. They bought, they bought, they bought Flying, Flying Buffalo Incorporated and Tunnels and Trolls. Since then, another company has bought Tunnels and Trolls, that being Rebellion Studios in the UK. Now, since then, since this game was originally, the rights to it were sold by Ken St. Andre, uh, it has went out of print. And to this date, we have no word of there being a reprint or a new edition or anything of the sort. And honestly, if Rebellion or whoever ends up owning Tunnels and Trolls that decides to come with a new edition of Tunnels and Trolls, 
I'm of course going to be interested in it and I'm going to purchase it and I want to check it out. But in the end, Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls is going to be the definitive version for me. Why? Because from this point forward, it would be an impossibility for the original crew that created this game, stayed behind this game, and kept this game alive for close to 50 years. Uh, this would be the last edition in which they would all contribute or contribute to it. So, yeah, you know, definitely would be interested in seeing more, but this will always, for me at least, be the definitive version of Tunnels and Trolls. I think I've said definitive enough, right? Definitely. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Woo! It's been a chaotic two weeks. Uh, anyways, out of print. Uh, available on drive through still, PDFs and such. I'll put a link down below. You know, if you want to check it out and you don't mind PDFs, uh, that those that it's it's all there. Uh, a lot of confusion around tunnels and trolls. We've talked about this before. Uh, that is unfortunate. That right before COVID, during COVID, and after COVID. The solo scene for tabletop RPGs and even board games to a certain extent and such. War games, etc. Just across the hobby. The solo scene really exploded. Yeah? And there, all of a sudden there was more interest in tunnels and trolls than there ever had been. I said it's unfortunate because it was after it was sold off. And there's nothing going on with the franchise currently. At least by name. We'll get there in a second. Uh... So that's unfortunate, and really a lot of people, they don't know where to go now. Yeah, that, that's where the main questions are around this. Where do you go, what do you grab, etc. Well, right before Tunnels and Trolls was bought out by Curated Corner and then Rebellion Studios, Ken St. Andre, Steve Crompton, and crew, they released Monsters, Monsters 2nd Edition. The first edition had came out in 1976. Uh, the second edition was to bring it to be analog, sort of, to Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls. If you don't know what Monsters, Monsters is, it shares the, it's a derivative game. You know, it's a sister game. It shares the same rule set and mechanics with tunnels and trolls you know they're they're interchangeable basically the big difference between tunnels and trolls and monsters monsters is that with tunnels and trolls it's got more of your stereotypical adventuring character races and classes dwarves humans elves halflings rogues wizards warriors kind of deal with monsters monsters uh the player characters and such, they were to play what would normally be the opposition to those stere stereotypical adventuring uh, classes and races. So in Monster Monsters, we're talking goblins, ogres, minotaurs, dragons, orcs, spider babies. I mean, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, a very interesting concept. But with Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, I saw this release as being more of a supplement to Tunnels and Trolls. Now, don't get me wrong, it is its own standalone game at the time of 2.0. Uh, but it was also very much supplemental to Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, you go to like the items, armors and weapons and such. See, see Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls for a, a greater selection. You go to your spells and such. See Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls for a greater selection. So, yeah. And nothing wrong with that. But the thing about it to me was I just couldn't see purchasing it because I believe it's Section 13 of Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls. will test my knowledge on... Yes, Chapter 13. We got the other playable races in Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls. And essentially what we what we received was a full edition of Monsters Monsters 
within Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls uh, in, in the same rule book, I should say. Yes, so I really couldn't fathom needing this when I already had this. And yeah, Tunnels and Trolls sold off. Monsters, Monsters was, was not. Uh, when Tunnels and Trolls was sold off, Ken St. Andre announced that Monsters, Monsters would now be the true successor of Tunnels and Trolls. And members of the original team would continue their work under the Monsters, Monsters banner. Now that definitely got my attention. I got with Steve, got the Monsters, Monsters stuff over here. And yeah, in a lot of ways, yeah, it, it, compared to Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, there are more monsters available and there's a few, it's, it's a little bit more fluffed out for the monsters. So I could definitely see it being useful. And really and truly, if I would have known that the, uh, that the, uh, the Game Master Adventure in the second edition was so good and it was set in Troll World, yeah, I would have bought it on the spot. Just somehow I missed out on that bit. Uh, I have the other slipcase edition as well. And that's the one I had looked at originally when they announced that it was having a remake or a deluxe version of the toughest dungeon in the world. A solo that I have in my collection from Judges Guild that I also love and like. So yeah, I was a late comer to this. It was just being hard headed. It's like, why do I need it? I've already got it in deluxe tunnels and trolls. Uh, but with the announcement that Monsters Monsters was the new flagship game of Trollhalla Press, I immediately jumped on board. Uh, now, with the Monsters Monsters 2.0 rules, it is completely tied to Tunnels and Trolls. It takes place in the Tunnels and Trolls campaign setting, which is Troll World. Uh, it pulls spells and beings and monsters and such that were directly from tunnels and trolls itself uh, so for this to really be a standalone game a lot of work is work is going to need to be done and I feel like they have completely went in the right direction with this yeah and that's really how we're going to end up talking about this in just a second the first thing after that announcement that went into the works and i'm so proud that i got to be part of this project from the beginning to the end and it was the monsterary of zimrala now this of course could be used with any rpg as it said but it was written for monsters monsters and yes it is one massive bestiary and probably the most unique bestiary I have in my collection and I have quite a few I have a quite a few probably I consider some of the best in the world this is right there with them uh, but it served more than that you know that yes it had a lot of unique monsters and races and such uh, but it introduced and brought in a full-fledged treatment of the world of Zimrala uh, and it also updated the rules of monsters monsters in quite a few ways uh, but what this was, it was a way to finally divorce Monsters Monsters completely from Troll World, at least overall. And it brought in a lot of new things. One of those things is some of the more famous wizards of Troll World, especially Gristlegrim, ends up showing up in Zimrala. Uh, Steve Crompton and Deborah Kerr's City of the Gods series and universe. You guys checked out those novels and comics and such that I used to harp about all the time? Still harp about them. They're fantastic if you love literature and reading. Yeah, I would hope you do if you're hanging around a tabletop uh, channel about role-playing games. Uh, anyways, anyways, uh, this has a lot of tie-ins with the City of the Gods. Uh, Zimrala is a land of portals. We've got modern humans, historic humans, future humans. We've got the City of the God races, the Egyptos and different things. We've got natives of Zimrala. We've got some curators, a science fiction genre style being that lives on one of the moons of Zimrala. And they come down and run scientific uh, experiments and analysis and such on Zimrala. 
Uh, so yeah, it just runs the gamut, and I'm a huge fan of the world. I'm a huge fan of the world. It's a world where, yes, there's a lot of classic fantasy going on. Yes, there's a lot of the city of the gods. There's science fiction elements. There's Lovecraftian elements, you know. Uh, there, it's just anything you can imagine, you can easily place within this world. And for whatever reason, it just seems to fit there naturally. Yeah, I've never seen a campaign setting quite pull this off. And like I said, it divorced, it, it was the main step in divorcing Monsters Monsters from Troll World and from Tunnels and Trolls and helping it come into its own. Uh, yeah, we got some fantastic solos from there that were based in Zimrala. Uh, we talked about a mission for a cat goddess. I believe that may be, at least in my opinion, the best solo adventure that Ken St. Andre and crew have ever published. And there's a heck of a lot when it comes to Tunnels and Trolls. And there's, a, there's some really good ones. Arena of Kazan, Death Trap, Equalizer, Naked Doom. I mean, etc. So it, I'm not saying that lightly. Um, but we continue. Jungle Jeopardy, uh, the Crystal Caves Challenge, etc. We're seeing a lot of new material coming out under the Monster and Monsters banner. Absolutely love it. Uh, and the next logical step, you know, that... Now you've got a new campaign world. You know, now you've got new adventure modules, both Game Master and Solo. The next thing to do is update the rules. Yeah? And that's where the 2.7 edition comes in. Now the 2.7 edition is identical in almost every way to the second edition of Monsters Monsters. So if it appeared in here... It's going to appear in here. Uh, but a lot of the verbiage was changed and wording was changed to divorce this from Troll World. Uh, and not only that, there was a lot of additional things added to the 2.7 rules. Now, I like that they didn't call this a third edition because it didn't change the rules whatsoever in their structure and their formulation of how they resolve mechanics and such. Uh, I love that they didn't decide to go all out into a crazy direction. They updated this so that it would congeal closely with the material of the campaign world of Zimrala. So inside, some of the additional things you will see is, one, is the weapon sections. Here's the Egyptos weapon section. Uh, here's the Zim weapon section yeah john carter would be proud right <laughs> there's the zim are more of a stone age or primitive uh society so they have a lot of stone and bone and wood tools uh we got the demons added to the rule set we've got demonic weapons added to the rule set and i believe this is the first time that ken saint andres wrote rules that uh that you that they're not they're not mechanical but like figuring out the demonic magic on weapons, you roll a d20. There's some other things here where you'll roll d100 even. Uh, but you get uh, sort of advanced weaponry. Uh, guns are added. Modern day and historical guns. Humanity. Science fiction weapons added. From the Zim and future humans. We've got laser blasters, stunners, etc. Uh, so, yeah, as you can see now, Monsters Monsters, even in the rules itself, is beginning to expand to include many, many different genres and styles of play that you could imagine to throw at it. Like I said, the world of Zimrala, the whatever, however this magic works that the Troll Godfather put on it, that you can pretty much throw anything you can imagine at this world. And for some reason, it just fits in. It makes sense. Whereas other games that have tried to do this, off the top of my head, like Rifts. You know, for whatever reason, I just could not get into Rifts with the multi-genre uh, stuff just going crazy all over the place. Uh, it didn't feel natural. It didn't feel believable. Like I said, maybe it's from the more abstract side of these games. You know, maybe that helps it where... 
you're not going for the realism. So it helps your mind relax a little bit to just, okay, it makes sense. There's curators down here, you know, with, with science fiction vehicles and weapons and such, hanging out with the Stone Age Zim and, and running tests on them. Yeah, that's not too hard to believe to me. Uh, one thing they updated was the magic system. They put it on the MCR, the Moon Crystal Radiation. Uh, that was something that was introduced in Zimrala. That there was a moon, parts of the moon fragmented came down. They radiate magical power. Uh, they updated the spell book big time. Yeah, instead of two pages, now we have like eight to ten. Maybe more. Yes, more. Uh, so big time update on the spells. Uh, seven levels of spells. Uh, when it comes to the monsters, we get our selection of the more classic fantasy monsters from the second edition 2.0 uh, rule set. Yeah, but we also get the addition of at least the statistics and such from all of the monsters and races from the monsterary of Zimrala, which is quite a bit. One addition I really enjoyed here was Ken St. Andre's section he wrote up on his own house rules, or things that he does for the game when he, when he runs games for others or plays solo or whatever, you know, for, and so... I think it was very insightful, some of the rules that he wrote down, you know, that, that he enjoyed using to make his games more enjoyable for the players. Uh, we get a nice overview of Zimrala. It talks about the races and such. Uh, but if you want to know about Zimrala, this is the place to go to. Yeah. And then we got a new uh, GM adventure, the Village of Skogheim. Yeah. Haven't read this yet. I've looked through this book, compared it with the 2.0 edition, but I haven't read it. Uh, but it tied in with the original adventure in 2.0. That was... Give me one second. Have some... Pay. Hey, you going toward the rear exit. Sit back down. We got things to talk about around here. The Ruins of High Elku. Yeah. Now, this took place uh, Kazan, on the Kazan River, Troll World, in Kazan. They changed the name and put it in Zimrala. Yeah? It is now the ruins of Gaelka. Uh, but yeah, fan, two fantastic GM adventures related to one another. Uh, now for Zimrala. Uh, they look fantastic, and I can't wait to dive into it. Uh, so, yeah, no changes to these 2.0 rules, but lots of additional material and verbiage change so that Monsters Monsters is more fully its own individual game now. Yeah, that's very important. That's very important, and I love what I'm seeing. Now, let's answer a big question I see around this community. I want to play solos or I want to play Tunnels and Trolls. What should I buy? What edition should I buy? Etc. I got a few answers to that. Uh, number one, Tunnels and Trolls itself is not a solo RPG. I have to say this quite a few times because you have a lot of yahoos that will tell you that it is a solo RPG, that it was the first solo RPG, etc, etc. Uh, Tunnels and Trolls is not a solo RPG. It was not the first RPG to have solo rules for it. It was the first RPG to have choose-your-own-adventure-style solo modules for it. Yeah, Buffalo Castle, 1976, kicked it off. And there are a ton of them for Tunnels and Trolls. When it comes to Tunnels and Trolls, the game mechanics and rules have stayed consistent from the first edition until Deluxe. What that means is that you could take any edition of Tunnels and Trolls and run any solo module ever written for Tunnels and Trolls. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Conversely, remember how we said 
This was on the same rules as Tunnels and Trolls. You can take Monsters Monsters 2.0 or even better 2.7 edition and run any solo ever written for Tunnels and Trolls or Monsters Monsters. Conversely, let's say you had Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls or 5th edition Tunnels and Trolls. If you didn't have the Monsters Monsters rule set, you could still play the Monsters Monsters solos that are coming out using those rules. But, but, here's the deal. Say you're only wanting to get into Tunnels and Trolls for the solo gaming aspect. My advice is not to buy any edition of Tunnels and Trolls. You don't even necessarily need to buy any of the versions of Monsters Monsters. Why? Because, especially with the later solos for Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls, and also, I want to see if this one has it. I know, Monst I, I know Mission for a Cat Goddess has it. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. I know Mission for a Cat Goddess has it, but yes, this one, uh, yeah, anyways, anyways, you go to the Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls and you look at the Monster Monster Solos. If they say they have easy to use or many rules in them, that's all you're going to need to pretty much run 99% of the solos ever created for Monsters, Monsters, R, Tunnels, and Trolls. Why is that? Like I said, this is not a solo RPG. You're going to use very little of this massive book. I mean very little. Character creation and combat. 99% of the solos, that's all you'll need to know. Rules that would fit on one page probably. You have no need of this massive tome to play solos. You have no need for the, the, these books, you know, the Monster Monster books to play solo. Uh, the only reason you would want to buy any edition of Tunnels and Trolls rulebook or Monsters Monsters is if you plan on using it for group play also, or that you want to utilize it in the style of solo that I mostly play which is creating a sandbox world and having a procedural game through that world, you know. But those utilize the entirety of rules when you use that, you know. It's it, it, This is written for group play. So, but running it sandbox style, you're going to run it with everything that you can possibly run it with from the rules. So, yeah, that's my suggestion, you know, that pick up for just solo playing itself of these Choose Your Own Adventure style modules. Pick up one that has the rules in the module itself and then just buy the modules that you wish to try and play with those rules. You shouldn't go wrong. Everything else, my suggestion would be picking up Monsters Monsters 2.7 or 2.0. Link on the description below. They're going to run everything for you just fine. Now, with the Monsters Monsters rules, there's a section in the back where I saw an Easter egg. Yeah, I thought we'd get a kick out of it. You'll even see something from Deathstalker 5 if you look in the back here. Uh, but we, we seen it says, the yellow wizard wrote something. I am the ruler of a hidden moon orbiting Zimrala. Dare to enter my domain at your peril for I am aligned with the dark elder gods. Yeah? What's that have to do with? What's that Easter egg? If you get a chance, check out this. You see that cover featuring a yellow wizard? <laughs> I love the Easter eggs like that. So this Kickstarter is about, it's already been sort of announced, but the Kickstarter page hasn't been updated yet so that we can see fully what's going on. Uh, but, but some things have already been announced. And one of those things is a supplement called Humans, Humans to Monsters, Monsters. Yeah, I'm really excited for this because I think it's about to go to the point where it is very similar to Deluxe Tunnels and troll, Trolls in scope and such. I'm guessing they released this supplement and a little bit down later down the road, we're going to get 
the 3.0 edition of Monsters Monsters. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be the deluxe edition of Monsters Monsters. So yeah, I can't wait for that. So still a lot to look forward to. Uh, me, like I said, I've got the Crystal Caves Challenge on top of the list. As soon as I get a break, I've got some, like I said, I've got commissions coming in. I've got a massive project coming in. I've got some other work going on. Uh, but hopefully maybe this weekend or some point I can sneak off and I can run through the Crystal Caves. You guys, would you like to watch that? I don't know. You, you guys want to see gameplay? This one might be sort of boring because it's just reading the, reading the descriptions out of the book and choosing a direction. I don't know what you guys want to see, but if that's something you want to see, if we can get a chance, we'll sneak off and do that. Uh, I will say with the new projects coming that it'll be a fantastic time uh, that if you're considering membership to our channel for $2.99 a month, I hate plugging myself, but I will every once in a while. I'm, we're trying to keep this thing going full time around here. At $2.99 a month, you get to support the show. Uh, there's a lot of different little additional things you get early access to videos etc uh but you also get the dev stalker 5's questions answers and advice videos uh take advantage of those yeah we've got the one for next month for april we've got the uh post in the community section for those members who haven't put their questions on there yet make sure you do i love doing those episodes it's sort of we get to sit down and relax more and just talk about uh, whatever it is that you guys send in. Uh, but for channel members with one of these big projects coming up, the one I'm so excited about that we're going to try to get out as soon as possible. You know, I'm already looking at uh, months and months and months of work. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Not just from building dioramas and painting just a ton of terrain and miniatures and such that we're going to do this that we're going to use for this project i'm going to have to learn uh keep going with the production value behind the camera because i want this thing smoking hot because it's like i said it's something that youtube's never seen uh it would be a good time to be a member as we're coming up on that just to let you know uh, anyways guys anyways i'm going back to the studio i'm getting back on the paint bitch i've got dark cultists uh, awaiting their final uh, coats of paint and uh, yeah then I'm going to bed because I'm pretty tired anyway anyway I'll see you guys next time here on the random encounter show and this has been but one tale from the days of high adventure you can join Deathstalker 5 on his quest by hitting that subscription button and joining his random encounter army. On the channel's about page, you will find our Facebook page and Facebook group where you can get more directly involved with the fun and make sure you use our affiliate links to support our show.